Okay, I call upon Professor Michael Kozlov to introduce Professor Josh Oster, the Sackler Prize laureate. So it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Professor George Oster, the recipient of the 2014 Sackler Prize in Biophysics, International Sackler Prize in Biophysics. As already mentioned, George was not able to join us today for personal reasons, but we do hope that he will be around in spring, probably in April, and give a lecture, and everyone is invited, of course, to come, and, and then uh, to come to this lecture and meet George at our campus. George Oster completed his PhD at Columbia University in uh, 1967 and uh, spent uh, an important one year of postdoctoral studies of his career here in this country at Weizmann Institute uh, under supervision of the great Aron Kachalsky. And uh, uh, he, th he then accepted a faculty position at, uh, at the University of California in Berkeley and his entire career was then spent until these days uh, in Berkeley. Uh, George Oster is a member of the National Academy of Science of the US and uh, received many honors, including the Genius Prize, the uh, fellowship from the MacArthur Foundation. Uh, now so the scientific part, which is important. Uh, George Oster is one of the founding fathers of the modern theoretical biophysics that I can witness myself. As I was young, I was very impressed by by, I remember by the work of George Oster on generation of forces in, in, in inside cells through polymerization of actin filament which drive the cell motility. This was, a, uh, this was done with Charles Peskin at that time. Uh, 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 specifically, uh, George Oster quantified the idea of terminal ratchet uh, and applied it to understanding the dynamic and active behavior of intracellular macromolecules uh, and, the, and, and the assemblies. Two of his break, breakthrough works in this field are uh, the model for ATP synthase and the model for forces, as I mentioned, for forces developed by growing actin filaments pushing on cell membranes and driving cell motility, cell, cell movement. Furthermore, George suggested a pioneering integrity differential model for pattern formation and applied it for models of morphogenesis. Many of uh, George Oster's ideas were way away, uh, uh, ahead of time and only now these days uh, the community uh, 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 starts to understand the profound and, profound and deep uh, meaning of these ideas and use them actually. <coughs> The prize is awarded to Professor George Oster for the discovery of physical principles behind intracellular force generation in cell motility, morphogenesis, and biological pattern formation. So we, we, because George is not, uh, didn't join us today, we cannot give him the, the certificate. The certificate will be handed over to George during his uh, upcoming visit in spring. But George sent us a, a small video address which, which we want to, to screen today for you and for us. I want to thank the Sackler Selection Committee for bestowing on me the Sackler Prize in Biophysics. I also want to thank Tel Aviv University for hosting this symposium and especially Nina Wolf who orchestrated the considerable administrative work. I regret not being able to be here in the flesh to receive this honor. I have, however, a long-standing connection with Israel. I spent a year of my postdoc working with Haron Kachalski. For sure I would not be here were it not for Haron. Having finished my PhD, I was sitting in on biology lectures at Berkeley, wondering what I should do with my life. At that time, Aaron was a visiting professor at Berkeley, and my desk was in the room adjacent to his office. Ever gregarious, he would frequently engage me in small conversations about thermodynamics, a subject we both loved. For reasons I'll never comprehend, one day he said to me, George, come back with me to Israel so we can continue our talks on thermodynamics. The Weizmann is a great place to do science, and it is very close to Israel. At the time, I didn't get that joke. 
but without any accomplishment to my name, my scientific career had been launched. Early on, I learned that our own love jokes and quotes, and one in particular he was fond of reminding us, was as follows. Physics can tell us what cannot happen, and it can tell us what could happen, but only experiments tell us what does happen. In those days, biophysics was not really a respectable enterprise. Biologists teased our own. Experimentalists observe things that cannot be explained, and theorists explain things that cannot be observed. Experimenters then saw themselves as hunters of new stuff, while theorists saw themselves as bringing enlightenment to experimenters, a view that irritated them. I can make my own theories, thank you. The aesthetic gulf in those days separating physics from biology was great, and they're captured in two quotes that I'm amused by. First, Paul Dirac said, it is more important to have beauty in one's equations than to have them fit experiments. Well, that didn't go over very well with experimentalists. They responded like Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Fortunately for us, times have changed, and today's symposium attests to that. One piece of advice from our own that I've practiced throughout my career is this. Work with people who are smarter than you and who know things that you don't. Finally, I leave you with one of my favorite cartoons that captured what our own felt was the chutzpah of biophysics in those days. And here is the great Hoover Dam, and the beaver says to the rabbit, I didn't actually build it, but it was based on my idea. So thanks again to the Tel Aviv University and the Sackler Foundation. My apologies again for missing this celebration of science.